uh, two draws a day, one being at the 1 o'clock in the afternoon and one at 7 in the evening. So 1 o'clock in the afternoon, of course, not very conducive to people who work. So it's basically seniors who can come out at 1 o'clock. So this is, um, like for, for lawn bowlers, this is a basic type of um, equipment that we have. So there's four balls, okay? We usually carry in there like a, a little tape measure, you know, to, uh, to measure the balls. Now in balls, like I mentioned, there's all different biases and different grips. These ones have got a deep grip on it. You can see how the grip on these. Another set that I've got have absolutely no grips, but these ones, are what are the narrowest bias. That means when they curve, they curve the least amount. And I've got another set that curves maybe an extra two feet, and then there's another kind you can get, it'll even come seven, eight feet. So it all depends what you like and, and the type of position that you may play or the type of competition. And these normally, with a narrow bias, are good for a lead or a second uh, because, again, they don't curve very much and they're very easy to control. Now. On a ball, you'll notice we have two marks. Okay, you see the, the small one and the big one. Okay, now this here, this is where your ball is going to curve to because the bias here, the circumference on this side is less than this. So as the ball goes out and it slows down, as soon as it starts to slow down, it curls towards the smaller circumference. We stand on the mat. Usually what I'll do is I'll find out, I'll decide, do I want the ball to curve this way or this way? If I want it to curve this way, I get my, the, the ball into my hand, so the bias here is towards the inside, so it's gonna curve into the right. So I get all lined up, I've got my point that I wanna aim at, I then walk onto the mat, and I've got my feet in line comfortable, okay? Now as I say, you crouch down, now, the, one of the most important things is your lead foot. You're only allowed to take one step, and the other foot has to remain there. So I step forward, and then I release. Now you watch the ball, see how it now curves off to the right. So that's basically all there is to it. And I am uh, a coach, and I'm also an umpire. That's why we oversee the rules of the game if there's any uh, controversies during the game. And usually in, uh, in a tur tournament there are certain rules that well, dress code goes and, and maybe if there's a um, measurement that they can't decide on, you only measure and decide. So they go from where they, they call a jack and that's being the center and that moves but they go from that and whichever ball is closest. Right, okay. So, so it's a lot, a lot like curling. And it's a lot like curling and stuff. Now you see the jack coming down here? Yeah. That can move. So as in curling, it's stationary. Here is where our lead throws it. Now they have to position it so it's in a straight line. Okay. Okay, and that's what the skip is doing. Now if a ball comes down and hits it and moves it, then the center is moved. Right. So there's an advantage to it sometimes. Okay. If we sometimes put balls behind, we may want to move that jack to pull the jack closer to the ball. Closer to our balls. Right. So you have to be very good to do that. There is a lot of bending and uh, and walking and that sort of thing. So I think once a person really tries it, you'll find out that it's a lot more physical than it looks. It looks quite relaxed and easy. But uh, another thing, uh, of course that plays into that is the people that are doing it are elderly people.
this is where the jack is. And the yellow one, if there is a toucher, remember when the, the ball hit the jack, it remains in play, even if it goes in the ditch. So if that mark ball that had the chalk on it goes in the ditch and say it's over here, we put it over here and we'd mark it just so they can kind of see that's where his ball is, this is where the jack is. So it gives you a good idea from throwing it quite a distance where you can see things because you cannot see it when it's in the ditch. These mats, like if you notice like there's a lot of, I shouldn't say it, but there's been a lot of elderly people, they can't bend over and roll the ball. If you roll the ball gently on the green, you don't get divots. But if people tend to have the tendency to stand up and they kind of chuck it. Well, if you do that, it's going to leave dents in the green and it's going to ruin it. So the green mat basically cuts down on that. And that's the whole purpose of it. We usually use it when there's more uh, new bowlers that are inexperienced or really wet conditions. Now, another thing, there's two, these two greens here have got what we call clay base. The two on the other side of our rink are um, sand base. So these ones here, they don't drain the water very well, as well as the uh, sand does. So these ones are usually quite moist and quite um, subject to ball marks, okay, because they are very tender. So that's why these ones, again, you'd want to have the green mats out just to protect the greens. Because there's nothing worse than having all of these little bumps in them. And then you have a tape and then you measure it. And it tells you one foot, two foot, three foot, four foot. And it tells you the speed. If it goes up to 11, 11 and a half, that's average. But these, these greens don't run any more than 12. Now, if, it, if, if it's warm, your greens dry out and they get faster. If it's wet, you've got to make your adjustments all the time. On a wet green, you really have, sometimes you really have to throw them. You don't have as much finesse and control on them. No. But on, on, a, on a fast green that's dry, you can, you can really finesse it. You throw it slower and your balls react And your ball more. will come back in a good six, seven feet. The curve is less. You have to yeah. throw it harder and the curve is a little yeah. bit less. And so that's why, see in a lot of tournaments too, and that's what's actually quite interesting. You could start a day like today, which is nice and hot. Um, the balls are running very fast. Two hours from now, we could have a rainstorm. If it's a tournament, we still play in it. Yeah, we, it could, could be, be down rain. to a 10. Yeah, it could be very, and so the speed of it changes drastically, you know, from one thing to the next. So that's why um, players have to be able to learn to play on both and learn how to adjust. I wanted to start this game for 20, 30 years ago, so I always drive by it. But I thought it was only for older people, you know, and I, I was scared to come. I had some guests, actually the president of our club and the vice president of our club were guests, and they were talking about lawn bowling. And then I found out, like Harriet has been into the Canadian, she's been in Worlds, and I got really intrigued about it. So I got an invitation and I came down. So last year was my, my very first year coming out. But with myself, I'm a very competitive bowler. So I teamed up with another person here, Garth Zumak, who's a professional golfer. He's a very precise lawn bowler, and he helped me. And so we'd come out every morning, every day, two hours, three hours a day to learn. And I was able to get into a few tournaments. This is my second year, and I've already bowled in uh, four provincial tournaments. I've got an invite now to play in the Tri-Province because I was able to get my game up. And now we're, uh, we're going down into the uh, U.S. Open. So we've been, in just a matter of two years, I've become very, very competitive. What's the age range of uh, lawn bowling? Well, I'd say about eight to 108. How long have you two been lawn bowling? What do you like about the sport? Well, it's lot you it's lots of strategy and fun. Yeah, it's really fun and you get to new meet new people also. And you have to and you have to like know you wish to your weight and stuff and it's, it's fun. So what's your favorite part about the sport? Um uh having fun.